Greetings, friends. It's dark outside, and uh, so you can't see me. Um, you get to witness my drive home. But you know, I, I just want to say, I just want to give like glory to God. You know, today I, I I got my barber's license, or today I like took the test after you know months and months of like hard work. You know of being a, a barber training of training as a barber but also like turmoil also like trauma also like warfare also emotional things that i've had to work out and physical things mental and cognitive things you know also therapy and all these other things you know and, and praise god i've gotten so much victory right so much victory along the way you know scripture says that there is seed time and harvest and scripture also says what you sow you shall reap you know and um and i thank god for it but what i wanted to say is you know during this process of barber school i was always looking at being a barber as a way of survival you know like being legitimate a way of surviving like okay cool i'm gonna get this license i'm gonna go work in a shop and uh and then boom, you know, I could just take care of myself and be responsible or whatever, but just really just survive, you know, really survive. And I, I grew up in a, in a, in a, in a household and a family in a community, a neighborhood where everything was about the hustle. Everything was about to survive and, and, and everything was about survival, you know, the next thing. And I'm going to be honest, bro, that word hustle oftentimes has struggle and oppression attached to it, you know? And, and and that's not I don't want to say that's not God but I'm just saying sometimes with, with this manipulative twist to it hit a stain, hit a lick, hit whatever you know, and somebody's being exploited but and, and, and when I look at this barber thing I was looking at it as like oh man okay I can move to the next you know and, and I would look at this hustle mentality if I could hustle but be like you know what but that's not me and I'm not enough to do that you know I'm not enough to be that but just having it is enough to just get to the next leapfrog, lily pad, while I'm trying to keep myself afloat. And tonight I was, uh, we were at men's Bible study and I was like, Lord, you know, I know the fight has been hard. This process has been hard, you know? And I'm like, I, I know I need your love and I've been praying for your love probably for the last four months. I know I need your love, but I think I also, I know I need your identity. Because the enemy will come, people will come, this world will come, opportunities will come to try to swindle you out of your identity or or the enemy will attack you in areas you don't have an identity. And the enemy will come and attack you in areas you, you have a false identity. And the enemy will come and keep you in bondage where your enemy, where your, where your identity is false, where you don't, the enemy will come attack you where you don't have an identity and the enemy will hold you in bondage in areas where you you your identity is built on things that are false, decaying, breaking, and perishing. Uh, and side note, that's probably why scripture says when we the gospel uh, seems like death, we preach the gospel like it's death to those that are perishing. Like the gospel is like terrifying to people that are fading away. And part of it is the things that we hold our anchor our life to are perishing. So back to what I was saying, I'm looking at like my life and I'm like, Lord, you know, I just looked at this barber thing as like, you know, like, okay, cool. It'd just be a way to sustain myself and keep my head afloat. And, 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 and then I'm like, Lord, I need your love. And I've been praying that, but there's a reason why, I don't know if there's a reason why I don't get your, I'm not receiving your love. And then my pastor even said this, he said, you know, the enemy will attack you. And this is about identity. You will see a lot of victory and the enemy is attacking you. But I know some areas the enemy will attack you where you don't know your identity. And part of our identity is because we, we have an inheritance as children of God. Part of our inheritance is our identity, who we are, who God has purposed us to be. And I know this, God's love, God's voice, God's purpose will release us from bondages we didn't know we had. It will just release us from bondages, that alone. It will release it. the voice of God, the identity of God will keep, will rip us from places we thought we were stuck in forever. Oh, hallelujah. And that can preach alone. I could end this video right now. The point I want to make is 
now when I look at it, and it, maybe this is you, maybe you got something in your life, you're like, if I could just get to this next thing and to whatever, and if I could just do this and do that, and, and you're in the back of your mind, you're just trying to make things fit with God, with God's hand, kind of like how a, how a child, you know, will grab their parent's hand and try to pull them towards a carnival ride or try to pull them towards some toys or pull them towards some candy or whatever, and we're trying to go, we're trying to accomplish God. We're, we're really like children, thirsty, hungry, quote unquote, lustful for the lack of a better word, right uh and, and pulling god so that we can use little children using a big god to accomplish our will and i'm and i had to stop and be like lord i think the reason why i don't i don't the reason why i don't quite understand your love is because i've always looked at it as a way of get out of jail free card and even this even this barber thing it's like lord i'm not looking i'm looking at it like a let me just sustain myself and i'm like if i if i'm honest it's really a selfish approach to something you blessed me with. And the only reason I've seen this is because God has blessed me with so much. He's blessed me with so much that I, it's it's him. It's him. Barber school. And then, oh man, I could go down a list. I, sh oh, I should. Just so much that he's blessed me with. Not only that, like where the, the place I live, the place I stay, the people that love me, the people that care about me. And even because of my own selfishness is probably the reason why I cannot see it. And the reason I probably have selfishness is because I don't, I've been abandoned and I don't know my identity. So I don't know, you know, you ever see somebody, you even see a dog even been hungry and they finally get food and they take their like scrap to the corner and just whatever. And, and you're like, you ain't got to do that dog, but you've been conditioned to believe that that's how you have to live because that's how you survived. And I'm like, and I think as a, as a, as a, we're not animals. We're not supposed to be animals. We have this nature in us that wants to pick and cherry pick low hanging fruit from God, take small chunks of blessings that much greater blessings and carry them off to a corner on our life and, and digest them, chew on them a little bit and then turn around and come and wipe our mouth and tell us and tell God says and, and blame God for why we're not satisfied. When really God has ordained much more. And if we could stop being selfish, we could probably be satisfied. We could probably lift our heads up. We could probably realize that we're kings and queens and not not stray dogs, you know, out here being being momentarily satisfied by tiny things that are spoiling, that are spoiling. And the reason things in our life are, are, are spoiling is because we don't have the character to sustain them. We don't really have the revelation of what they are. And if we really did, it would convict us because it would require us to know who we're supposed to be. Some of us, and that's why sometimes the blessings of God turn out, make our heart sick. The blessings of God, we, we think we gain something, but honestly, we end up realizing that, no, I'm actually a lot more wretched than I realized. I, I, I gained something, I, I'm actually a lot more poor than I realized. I, I think this is going to make me whole. I'm, I, I'm actually a lot more sick than I realized. And, 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 some, and even that is can be God's blessing. In scripture, the book of Revelation, Jesus goes, I, I think it was the church of Laodicea, which side note is a reflection of the, of the church that's walking the earth now, right before Jesus returned, the church of Laodicea in some theories, right? And it's like the lukewarm church or something. And Jesus tells these people, you think you're rich, but you're poor. You think you have nice clothes, but you're naked. You, you think you're in all these things. And what's funny was as he's saying these things, it would have pricked and cut to the heart of the people at that time because their culture was known for having uh, their culture was known for having tax tiles and so really nice clothes and fancy dyes. And and even he said, you thought you think you, you're knowledgeable, but you're blind. And they're known for having his eye salve. That was remarkable. And, and, and they're, they're known for. Um, for being very wealthy because of their exports and in, exports and, and imports or whatever. And Jesus is literally saying, you are lukewarm. I will spit you out, your, out my mouth, right? You're neither hot nor cold. I will spit you out my mouth. And and that's a reflection that at that time, that, that culture, those people had water that was lukewarm. It wasn't cold, cold, not for refreshing, not for drinking like their neighboring cities. And it wasn't warm like for therapeutics and, and steaming and baths and things like that. So the water they had was stale. It literally was wretched. It was wretched. And so I think sometimes, and so going back, sometimes we think we have something, but 
we, we think we have something, but really it's by God's grace, him putting his eyes out on us, on our eyes that really opens our eyes to see better. That really opens our eyes to see how wretched we are. When Adam and Eve sinned against God, scripture said their eyes were open and then they sowed fig leaves in attempts to cover their shame. While God was walking in the midst of the garden, they heard his voice while he was walking, right? And sometimes God's, God coming to meet us, even though we are in our brokenness and our shame, sometimes just God's presence and his blessings turns us away because we're broken and we're wretched. We're broken and we're wretched. Now God came to Adam and Eve. He came to Adam and Eve after they sinned. And Adam and Eve were convicted. God didn't shame them. Adam and Eve shamed themselves because they disobeyed. And God had so much more. So much more. I remember God said this to David. He was like, man, I gave you so much riches and glory and honor. If it wasn't enough, I would have gave you more. But yet you, you sinned against me. And it was what God established David, right? Here's another example of Here's another example of somebody who God blessed into a position. Let's say David was a barber and he goes, David, you know, I gave you this barber shop or whatever. He's, that's probably a weird scenario, but uh, he, David is king and he made David king and David used that and abused that authority. I want to say, and maybe it was just a movie, but he told Bathsheba, she said, I will not cheat on my husband with you, David. And she, and then he goes, well, will you cheat on your husband for the king, right? He took his own, who he was as a person, wasn't enough, one, to sin, but two, he used the authority that God gave him and said, would you, would, would you, what would you do for your king, you know? Anyways, so sometimes we take what God gives us and are satisfied with small chunks of it, satisfied with small pieces of it, and it turns into sin and sometimes God blessings. Yeah, sometimes God's blessings, um, we can be satisfied with just a chunk and not walk in right relationship with him. So anyways, back to me, I can look at this barber thing and go, you know, let me satisfy myself and let me, you know, not even satisfy. Think I'm doing good. I'm righteous. I pray. I go to church. I pay tithes, but I got a job I'm going to go do. And I'm, I'm going to try to, you know, pimp that as best as I could or uh, for the lack of a better word, really hustle this up. But honestly at the end of the day i'm like jesus you brought me here it's not about me it's about loving people it's about blessing people and what do you want to do in my life well how do you want to what do you want to do through this opportunity you've given me um paul once said this he said oh ye galatians have you stopped like you were saved by grace did you stop believing by grace now right like god your grace is sufficient enough to get me where i'm at but did you, did you stop believing God? Did you stop believing God? And like, as if his grace just was sufficient to get you where you are. Now you're just here fumbling or whatever. I hope that makes sense. But I, I, God's grace got me here. His favor got me here. Not me. His favor got me here. And it's been hard. It has been hard. But my point is, I don't need God's favor to get me somewhere like a bus transfer and say, all right, Jesus, I got it from here. Good luck. No, 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 Jesus. I need you every single day of every single moment. I need, I need, I need you like a parent. I need you like a toddler, uh, like a, like a kid needs their, like a kid needs their parents. I need you. Please don't leave. Please don't leave. Show me how to do this thing. Show me how to walk in this life. Show me Jesus. And so that's just my point. Um, I think I look at this, I was looking at this opportunity like, boom, you know, okay, cool. I'm going to take the reins and make it work and make God proud. No, 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 no. God is already proud because I believe he's proud because I yield. He's proud because I submitted, you know, and I don't need to st pick up something that he started that we're supposed to partner with. You ever see one of those fathers? I remember my favorite TV show was, uh, my name is Earl, you know, it, I, I, it was in a very depressing time. It was something to laugh at. Right. And I'm not saying it's something you should be laughing at now. But my point is that in the movie, Earl's Earl's dad had animosity towards him. Right. God don't have animosity towards us. But Earl's dad, Earl kept messing up this old car that his dad was trying to put together. And by the end of the end, Earl was trying to right his wrongs. And he so he ended up winning this car back that he lost when he was like a kid. 
end up winning it back, bringing it back to his dad. And he said, all right, dad, I got your car. Now check my bad deeds off your list. And, and he was like, he was like, basically dummy. I didn't, I, I didn't buy this car so I could drive it. I bought the car so I could fix it up with you. So me and you could spend time together. So I could spend time with you. I was, you was a horrible kid and I was doing whatever I could to just spend some time with you. And you kept doing horrible kid stuff, right? So anyways, but God was, he was trying to spend time. And I was just like, God, like we can go, okay, you know, all right, God, I got you this. Here you go. Now I could take it from here. When really God is trying, God's have a project. He's trying to work on us. And yeah, we can be wretched kids. How about this? I won't say we, I'll just say me. And you can just silently lift your hand up, you know? And, 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 and God, God can work with me some, you know? So all I'm saying is this barber thing is that broken car is the car that need fixing. And you know what else is that broken car? My soul, my identity, the love I need from God. I, those things are broken and the enemy fights me in these areas. And I'm pretty sure the enemy fights you in these areas. And, and God is wanting to make us whole. He's wanting to piece back an engine that needs to be healed. He's willing to sit with us and heal it. And guess what? God ain't, God don't ordain cars to sit in the driveway and rust. He wants them to run. And just when it starts to run, it ain't my job to go, all right, God, I got the keys. Peace. No, 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 no. It's my job to enjoy the ride with him. Enjoy it. The enemy don't want us to enjoy what God has prepared for us. And and the reason why sometimes we can't is because we're too selfish. We don't know who gave it to us. The only way you can enjoy what God has prepared for you is with God. The on, I'm going to say that again. I'm, I'm preaching to myself, friend. The only way you can enjoy what God has prepared for you is with God, is with him is with him. Yield to the process. Yield to the learning. Yield to the teaching. Yield to the building, the refurbishing, the repairing, and you'll know who God, you'll be able to glorify him because you know, you know who you, whose you are. You'll know who you are and you'll know why he made you. And you get to partner with him in that every day. You get to wake up and love who you are in this life and this journey that God has called you to. You'll know it again. You'll know whose you are, your God, your gods. You'll know who you are. You know your identity, right? And, and you, your identity and you know why he put you here. You know your journey. You know your purpose, right? It's hard to know those things when you just uh, when you just sack chasing blessings, when you just sack chasing blessings selfishly, you know, when you're a career Christian religion we're just a religious whatever my homeboy called them blunt monkeys right people who would be out here high just trying to you know trying to smoke for free or whatever like no god is god is good he don't anyways sometimes we 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 we, we hunger for things that that are so small and petty and frail and temporary and god scripture says set your mind Set your sights above, set your mind on things higher. Think on these things. Be not conformed to the ways of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. If you are not born again, you will by no means see or witness the kingdom of heaven. That You will not witness it. I, I, anyways, friends, I love you, whoever you are. And I pray God gives you his love. I pray that God gives you his identity. I pray that God gives you your journey, your orders, and I pray that he use you partner with him in it. You allow him to give it to you, but you posture your heart to say, Lord, what you want to do in me and through me, I'm going to agree with it. Even if it's just, even if it's me just enjoying this life and enjoying who he made me, even whatever it is, Lord, you'll make it, you'll make it worth it every single day. I just want to love, some people can't love their life because they don't know why God put them on this earth. And then I don't know who put him on this earth. All right, my friends, I love you.